Hey everybody, I'm Jonathan Merriman, joined by Cole Pern. Cole, let's cut straight to the chase. The four team gets the ninth win of the season at Bristol. Can these guys notch 10, maybe even 11, 12 wins this year? Uh, they're just keeping rolling. I mean, they're, they're, they had a great car on Saturday night, definitely had the best car, best car won, so can't argue with that. And I think uh, when they're winning on days when they don't have the best car, and then they're bound to have the best car some days, and they're capitalizing on those opportunities too. And and that's uh, that's what you dream about when you when you got a great race team and you think all the woulda, coulda, shouldas, and, and they're just checking all those off right now. Put yourself back on the box, and, and you're, you know, battling those guys. What's a guy like Gabe Hart and these other, you know, top-notch crew chiefs, what's it like knowing that some days you just can't even run with the guy? Yeah, I think that's tough. You know, you mentioned the 11. They've been, uh, you know, not running very well the last couple of weeks. And I think, uh, yeah, and then you, you see the four continue to, to dominate and run well. So they're definitely, you know, that's been so much about the four versus the 11 battle, but the four is definitely uh, stretching it out on, on them. And that, and that plays mind games with, with your competitors for sure. Uh, let's talk about the, the four guys got eliminated, William Byron, Matt DiBenedetto. Uh, we had Cole Custer, also Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney being the biggest name in that bottom four. Um, I mean, that's got to hurt, right, when, when you know, you've, you run well all year long and you just can't seem to put it together for three races to open this thing up. Yeah, that's what you, you know, you're scared about going to the playoffs. It's, you know, everything makes sense on paper that you should, you should be good and, and, you know, you should make it. And I think we see that every year. You see one of those guys that you think uh, are going to be there to the end uh, get eliminated in those first couple of rounds. And, and they were vulnerable. You know, they got off the wrong foot uh, with the penalty at, at Darlington and just kind of dug themselves a hole and never, never got out of it. And I think, uh, you know, for them, that's, they're going to be sitting around wondering what happened. I mean, the other three guys, yeah, it sucks for them, but I don't think anybody was as surprised to, to see them get knocked out, but definitely the 12, uh, getting knocked out is huge. All right, Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, um, you know, those guys aren't friendly with each other, and Kyle said it best after the race. There's a reason why he doesn't have any friends on the racetrack. Um, you know, when you were crew chief and for Truex, you know, you guys had a few run-ins with the 22 as well. Can you relate to what Kyle's going through battling for a win late in that race? Yeah, I think he said it well right after the race. You know, lap cars are a part of it, and you got to get around them. But I don't know. There's a certain respect that, that comes to it when it's when it's not your day that you don't mess the other guy's day up because it could be the other way around some other day. And I think, you know, if Joey was fighting to stay on the lead lap, that'd be one thing. But he was about to go two laps down, you know, already locked in the playoffs, really essentially racing for nothing at that point. Everyone says, oh, he could go to the middle. He could do this to go around him or whatever. But it's just not that way. you got to remember that the difference between a first-place car and a 10th place car is not that much especially at a half mile short track like Bristol so you take somebody's line away for a few corners while uh, in a row and then you get the tires hot uh, running in traffic and then all of a sudden you're struggling and you're vulnerable so no Kyle says he's not going to make it out of this next round if he doesn't and Joey somehow does does this come back and bite the 22 if the 18's running around him uh, I don't know. I guess 22 doesn't matter that, you know, obviously we've seen that happen to him before and it doesn't really change how he races. So, uh, I mean, that's the bed that they like to live in and where they sleep. So it's just, uh, it's kind of their, uh, their MO and, and is what it is. So I think, uh, this next round is going to be, you know, definitely a lot of chaos. It'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, back to Kyle Bush. There is no way this guy goes winless this year, right? I mean, it's Kyle Busch. Uh, I mean, Kyle Busch at Bristol, you'd think, would have been the sure bet, and they did a great job. They had a, they had a great car, you know, starting in the back. When the rag dropped, they were, they were flying and moving forward. He was the first one to kind of go up top and get the top ripping and, you know, did an awesome job. I mean, credit to them. And they, they needed to have a good week to show that they could compete for wins, and they got that at least. So I think that will definitely give them some, some confidence that they haven't had lately, you know, to think that they can compete for wins. You know, you talk about his confidence level post-race. He said he wasn't making it out of the next round. What do you do for your driver to pick him up? I mean, you know, Kyle's going to be Kyle. He's going to have that attitude. But, you know, do you rough him up a little bit, you know, out when cameras are off and say, look, man, it's going to be okay? <laughs> I don't know. Adam Stevens is the one to, to ask on that. He's definitely, uh, you know, got the best experience and knows how to get Kyle motivated in the right way. So, 
you know, I wouldn't bet against those guys for sure. It's just, he's right. He's in, they're in a tough spot going into this round. And uh, I think everybody is, you know, when they readjusted the schedule, this is the round that everyone is uh, afraid of and, and for good reason. So the guys with less playoff points uh, are going to be the ones that are, are most, are most afraid of it. So, you know, you have two big wild card races in this round and, and, you know, talking about Kyle Busch, they historically don't really run that well at Vegas. So it'll be interesting uh, for them how they make this, make it through this one. So who do you see as vulnerable this round? You talked about, you know, this being maybe a bad round for Kyle. You look at how the threes running, they're kind of setting the world on fire. So this is a little bit of a head scratcher, isn't it? About, you know, who could go home and who's good. I think Vegas will be the big, big one to, to get an indication because right now you look at the points and the outside of the four and the 11, no one's really safe. I don't think uh, if anyone has a bad race in Vegas, uh, you're going to be vulnerable because it's just going to be really hard to, to go into those next two and try and make up points. You know, I think we saw at the end of the regular season trying to go into a speedway speedway race and make up points, uh, which could be the situation in Talladega is just, I don't know, it's a coin flip. So, uh, you know, definitely some, anybody that is, uh, you know, outside of those top two, I, I think is, is hugely vulnerable. All right, and lastly, silly season. A big domino fell uh, on Monday. Ross Chastain confirmed in the 42 for 2021. So this has a potential to be a busy one or two weeks with news of where people are racing next year. What do you make of all this? Yeah, I thought that was interesting. You know, we've heard the the big names kind of being bounced around uh, as far as who's going where and stuff like that. And Chastain really wasn't one that was on that radar as far as being a, a potential to take one of those main seats. And and for him to take that main seat is uh, is a big deal because then it kind of really leaves some questions of, you know, there's a lot of good drivers that are still out there without a ride and only so many seats. So I think, uh, you know, with not many weeks left in the season, some of these deals that we're hearing about are going to have to happen at some point um, in order to be able to get ready for next year. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting how it all plays out. Definitely. Uh, I think everyone's kind of waiting to see each week what, what news drops for sure. But today was a big one. All right, the pressure's on, on track, and things are getting silly off track. Cole, it sounds like following NASCAR. We appreciate your time. Thanks, John.